equal. They make their own decisions, and they definitely make their own decisions when it comes to killing. I mean, you you don't let anybody talk you into killing anybody else. I don't care what the circumstances are. That's a choice you have to make. And really, that's the way it should be all over the world all the time. One person should not have the power to force another person to kill a third person. We want to abolish that all over the world. Mm -hmm. That's a part of the code. You want to get to the place that's a mindset. Killing should be made serious business. We take killing as being something like this, eating an ice cream cone. I mean, little articles in the paper, I mean, every day. I mean, you know, so-and-so got killed last night. Well, so what, you know? Hang some candles on the fence of me, you know, and next, next killing in the next 15 minutes. Under the system of white supremacy, that's the way everybody's got about killing. In fact, we look in the newspapers, and they say there was an explosion in, in the mines the other day. How many people were killed? Well, it looks like, you know, it might be as high as 75, uh, but right now is this reported 25. But it might go as high as 75. People have gotten to, to the place now where they look for that 75 to be the figure. They'll look in the paper the next day and say, hey, did, is it more now than it was yesterday? I mean, we've gotten to the place we have this bloodlust. I mean, kill it, kill it. Somebody got killed. I mean, how many people got killed in the car wreck? I mean, it was a chain reaction and whatnot in a fog. Well, it looks like, you know, the casualty rate is pretty low. But everybody looks in the paper and looks in the paper and looks in the paper. And if it turned out that nobody got killed, I mean, really, we're kind of taught in this system to say, you mean to tell me 212 cars were wrecked in that park, in that bridge area, and nobody got killed? When they were expecting the ambulances, I mean, to be running and running and running and running, nobody even got injured. Oh, no, that's not supposed to happen. We kind of look for it to happen. We want it to happen. Uh, they had a term for it back in the 1940s. I forgot what it was. Morbid curiosity. I mm. think that's what it is. Morbid curiosity. Like the person who is standing up on the building, and he's saying, I'm going to jump. Mm-hmm. Everybody crowds around, and we have been trying to train that if that person changes his mind, or he was just joking, we get angry. You know? Hmm. I mean, I ran out here, I thought I was going to see something. And the chump didn't jump. Hmm. I'm disappointed. Morbid curiosity. That's the way. Yes, morbid wow. curiosity. I mean, and we have been trained that way, to be lovers of death. And this is why all of our, you know, bookstores are full of mystery novels and all like that. The headless corpse, the body in the attic, mm. the, you know, Mary is missing, you know. And everybody is deep down, they say, when she's rescued, that she turned out not to be missing. She went to a party, I mean, didn't come home. I mean, at a gut level, we are trained to be disappointed. Oh, I thought Mary was missing. I thought somebody killed her. She just went to a party and didn't come home. You know? Yes. Oh, well, you know, that ain't no news. 